Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and today what I want to talk to all of you about is the Hammer of Proving. This is from Season of the Chosen, and this is your quest item that is going to allow you to kind of interact with the seasonal activity, and also allow you to work with the Prismatic Recaster and Umbral Ingrams to try and get some focused loot, whether you're going for a very specific weapon or a piece of armor with a specific stat roll. We'll get to the Prismatic Recaster and the Umbral Ingrams at the second part of this video, but you guys can always use the scroll bar, uh, the time bar to pick the section that you want to talk about. But the Hammer of Proving is used when you go into a battleground, you'll go through the entire thing. Once you kill the champion or whoever that guy's called at the end of those things, uh, when you kill it, you're going to have the main chest you open, basic loot. You're also going to have three chests that open next to it. It's three person activity. Each person gets one. If your hammer has one of these etched challenger medallions slotted into it, you're going to be able to destroy that tribute chest. It's, chest. it's a pretty cool animation. You smash the chest and you're going to get a couple things from that. One, you're probably going to get a piece of loot, which is cool. Uh, and then the other piece is you're also going to charge up this hammer. Now, this hammer allows you to do the focusing at the umbral for your umbral engrams at the recaster. We'll cover that in a little bit. But each time you smash a tribute chest in the battlegrounds playlist with the hammer, you're going to earn a charge in the hammer. Now that looks like this. As you can see, my hammer charges is one of five. It starts out at one of three. I've upgraded it slightly. Uh, you'll also see here on the hammer, I've got a cabal gold. Now the gold is what you're going to earn throughout the system. You can earn gold from strikes, you can earn it from public events, you can earn it from Crucible, Gambit. Uh, apparently I've heard dungeons also can drop some of that per encounter. So you can earn it in quite a few different places. Um, some are going to earn more than others. Gambit seems to be about 8 for me when I did mine. Crucible also seems to be about 8 because those are a little bit shorter. Strikes seem to be a pretty good like time investment versus gold because I've gotten anywhere from 14 from a Vanguard Strike playlist. I did an Adept Nightfall, which is still never that difficult. It's just match made. Uh, I got, I think, 16 in one of those. So anywhere 14 to 16 from Strikes. Uh, public events, if you don't do the Heroic, it's three. So make sure you do the Heroic. That's actually seven. And if you go run around and do like, you know, three or four public events on EDZ, sometimes those go fast. That could be a pretty decent farm as well. Nightmare Hunts, those are pretty small. Those are like three gold. Um, so those probably aren't going to be worth your time. As for anything else, um, basically dungeons, I don't know how much they drop, but dungeons themselves, potentially gold per encounter. So if you picture Prophecy, you've got the main boss You've at the start, like the sphere dome room. Then you've got the cube room. Those would probably each be a boss encounter drop. Pretty much anywhere you're, where you're going to get those main powerful drops and then the final boss. So potentially, if a decent amount drops in there, you could do three encounters and get three drops. Depends on how fast you can run a dungeon. Some people can fly through those things in like half an hour. And, you know, if I could get, say, if it's 30, maybe from all three of those in 30 minutes versus doing a strike on a playlist or something, I might get 14. Might be worthwhile. So overall, not too shabby. The Hammer of Proving is what you're going to be using to store your gold. You're going to store your hammer charges, and then also it's the, the thing that you use in the animation to smash the tribute chest to break them at the end of each battleground. Now, the hammer itself has some upgrades that you can earn. So this is the war table. Where I'm at is up here in the helm. If you go to the tower, we got this new little social space. I kind of wish it was connected so you could walk in here, but I kind of understand why it's not. would probably break the tower a little bit. But this is the war table. Now, the war table has couple things. One, you're going to have your bounties daily and repeatable. You're going to have some mods. These actually seem to be fairly cool. They're probably going to rotate on a weekly basis. So these elemental wells are a new thing that they've built into the game. So definitely check these, try and buy all these up because it could be very cool. Uh, and then the big pieces are going to be your hammer enhancements. Now, the hammer enhancements is how you improve your hammer. Literally straightforward as it says. You have to start when you go through the initial quest buying this one right here. It's tribute chest one. Smash a tribute chest in the battlegrounds to earn one gold. Now, as I said, you're going for 14 gold will buy you one of those little medallions to allow you to smash it. So earning one back is kind of small potatoes, but it's something. This is basically how you start the enhancements. Now, it is probably hard to tell, but I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit on these when I do this video. So if I zoom in right now, what you'll see is the first one that I was showing you, top center, that one is 0 0.1. And then as you, on the green line, if you move out from it either direction, you see 1.1, then 2.1, and then 3.1. And then if you go down to the blue line, you're going to see 0 0.2, 1.2, 2.2, 3.2. 2. 
Purple line, 0 0.3, 1.3, 2.3, 3.3. Basically, the way the that you have to do these unlocks, you have to start in the middle of the green line and work your way out. So if I start here, then I can now get this one and this one. If I want this one, I have to unlock this one first. Same thing here. It says it requires Red Legion Chest 1, which is right next to it. So from the top middle, you have to work your way out in the green line. You have to work your way left. You also have to work your way right. From each one of those, you're going to be able to go down from there. So you can see Hammer Charge 2 requires Hammer Charge 1. Hammer Charge 3 requires Hammer Charge 2. So you're going to be able to go out in each direction, and then you're going to be able to work your way down. Now, some of these are going to be more beneficial to making your hammer more efficient. You're going to be able to earn more gold, and some of them are just about getting more loot drops all the time. The guidance that I'm probably going to tell all of you is going to be efficiency first, and then bonus loot later on, because if you're more efficient first, then you can do all of this more often, which is going to be a benefit. So you've got a couple different columns. The first one that I unlocked is the hammer charge. Now, the main reason I took this one from three to five, I'll explain over at the prismatic recaster, but basically it allows me to go even deeper into the focusing on the umbrella grams. So that gets me up to five. If I take this one down, it's five to seven. And the last here is seven to 10. So I can hold 10 hammer charges as a max once I get this, this unlocked all the way down here. So theoretically, if I had 10 umbral engrams and I want, and it costs one charge for each, I could focus 10 umbral engrams one time and then I'd be out and have to charge them back up again. So the capacity of this is going to serve you very well. And this is probably one of the early things I'm going to recommend upgrading. Second one is going to be right here, your Cabal Gold. It's going to upgrade the capacity that you can hold from 42 to 56 to 70 to 84. Every time it goes up by 14 because each one of those little medallions costs 14 for the hammer. Now, also very beneficial. Main reason is, right now the only place to earn gold, mostly, is going to be in other activities. Now as you're leveling up, it's probably not going to be so bad, because you're like, oh, I gotta do some strikes, I gotta do some crucible, I gotta do some gambit, gotta do some other stuff. You're going to be earning gold. The more of it that you can hold at a time, the less you have to kind of be like, oh, I gotta take a break from strikes, I gotta make sure I don't waste a strike and not earn gold, because you can't go above. So if you have 42, of, of your current 42 capacity, or even say I had this one and I had 56 and I was maxed out and I go to do a strike. I don't get gold that like goes to my postmaster. I would honestly lose it. So having bigger capacity for the other stuff that you're doing, it's one of those that's going to continue to accumulate. So upgrading this also is going to be beneficial as early as possible. And I'll explain how you upgrade this here in a second. Over here, we've got your mission focus. Basically, every time you do a battleground, um, you can do one, two, or each week. A third smashable tribute chest gives you a random piece of season chosen gear. So there you go. So honestly, if you want to smash the chest and get a bonus piece of gear, cool. But you have to unlock these first anyway. I'm going to leave the bonus gear for later on. Now, I'm going to want these bottom two. So I have to get this one first. But I'm going to kind of skip and go over. So if you're going, once you go, and you can honestly decide. I'm probably going to go right first for capacity and charges. And then, so my functionality is all there, and then I'm gonna work on efficiency and then bonus loot. All right, so you have to get the Red Legion chest no matter what you do to get anything else on the left side of this. Now from here, I'm not gonna go down because all it does is increase the chance to earn a random season of the chosen gear from the Red Legion chest. This gives you a higher and higher chance. I'm not gonna do that till later because I want the other functionality first. Now, if you come over here, the wording on this is weird. So if I get it wrong in this video, I will comment below and try and make it more clear. But I think basically the way I can understand this is you're going to learn to make a new challenger medallion. I don't know if it's going to cost any different. We'll have to find out. It will increase the charge capacity until you focus an umbral engram with your hammer. So theoretically, if I slot this in and then I go into the battlegrounds and I smash the chest, what it's going to do is increase the capacity of my hammer, theoretically, from five to six. And then I can go through, do my other things, and charge up my hammer, and I would have a total of six charges possible, even though right now my capacity shows five. Now, I don't know if you could stack this multiple times, but theoretically it's probably just one. Either way, you do this one time in your battleground charging, you get up one more, continue to earn some gold, do this, come back, and you'll have a bonus charge that you can actually use. And that's going to come into play later as you can actually earn more charges. 
Second tier of the medallion is Challenger Medallion 2. Learn to make a, make a new Challenger Medallion, which grants a chance to earn a random focused Season of the Chosen Umbral Engram. So the focus engrams are going to have specifics to them, like they're going to be a little more directed in the loot that you're going to get, but it's still random. So I will save this for later. Now, the only reason I theoretically wouldn't save this for later is going for the bottom tier, and this one actually seems fairly good. Learn to make a new Challenger Medallion that grants an additional hammer charge, but costs more Cabal Gold. So this is where I talk about efficiency. So normally each medallion costs 14 gold and you get one charge. Now me, I would probably be okay with if I have a capacity that you know gets bigger later on. So like if I have 10, if I come over here, every medallion I do costs me 28, but I get two charges for it. That's less time I spend in the battlegrounds because each battleground tribute chest that I smash gives me two charges. So it may cost a little more, but your battle, your time spent running the battleground, you have to do. You don't have to do one for one. You can do one battleground for two charges. And there's a chance to have even more than that. So this one actually does seem good in the long run for efficiency. That's the big one. Finally, you have the proving room. If you go far to the left, uh, it grants a chance to earn a random focused umbral engram. That's literally the rune itself. That one's only okay, but again, it's the bottom tier that's good. Proving rune number two, unlock a new slot on the hammer. Now, theoretically, what that's going to do is allow me to, you know, put a proving rune in there and a challenger medallion or whatever else I want to put in there. So you can have more than one slot. So this one theoretically could be good for multifunctionality. Depends on how much you can do. If I could do two challenger medallions of this one that theoretically cost more, if I could do potentially one smash with two runes, and I could get four charges from it. I don't know if that's actually how it's going to work. We're going to have to see in practice what stacks and what can work together. Because it's possible that you can only do maybe one challenger medallion and then one proving room. They may be separate. Probably is how that's going to work. But maybe you could stack them. That'd be cool. Bungie, if you're listening, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, but this one actually allows you to unlock a proving room that has a chance to award Cabal Gold. Again, we are weeks away from knowing how much gold that's going to be. But I would honestly probably tell you that's why there's certain ones I'm going to lean towards and certain ones I'm going to wait till later. Finally, over here, you've got a chance to make a new proving rune that grants a chance to earn an additional hammer charge by smashing the tribute chest in the battlegrounds. So when I said this one is a guaranteed two, it may cost more. It may cost 28. It'd be cool if it was slightly discounted, but it may cost you 28 gold to get two. The cool thing is this, depending on how frequent it happens, could make your 2-3 or even your 1-2 just at a chance. And as you have a chance with a new slot, you could do a normal rune plus your proving rune. We still don't know how much gold these things cost. We'll figure out what the efficiency is. But then you have a chance with one smash to get two and then possibly three with one battleground. So this is all about efficiency. So my recommendation for the hammer enhancements first are going to be both of these. Both the charge capacity that you can hold and the amount of Cabal gold that you can hold. And then over here on the left, it's probably really going to be your preference to say, do you want to go Challenger Medallions for the Double Smash? I would probably go here first and then run through the Proving Runes next. After you have Hammer Charge, Cabal Gold, Challenger Medallions, and then Proving Runes, then the final things that I would do you could probably do the Red Legion chests and then the mission focus as the finale. Because getting extra drops, it's all in randomness anyway, but trying to make your hammer efficient as early as possible, that's my recommendation. So hammer charge, cabal gold, challenger medallion, and then proving rune would probably be the order I'm going to work down. Probably going to go two, two, and two as we go through. Straight down challenger medallion, so I've got to go through Red Legion chest down and then proving rune all the way down. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the hammer enhancements, but probably you guys are, are wondering, how the heck do I unlock these things? Well, it all comes from right up here. So this is the war table, and what you've got up here is your reputation. Now, you're going to get at least a, you know, random chosen engram from it, which is cool. But the idea is, every time you upgrade your rank at the war table, what you do is you get to pick one of these. Now, where do you get reputation for the war table? That comes very specifically in one place, right here in Seasonal Challenges. So I've done a couple already. This one, the lens focus doesn't have too much involved, but you've got 
the contender's ascent rocket launcher kills 75 so as i said use a rocket launcher and also challengers proving completed that's basically the initial quest for the helm so use a rocket launcher get some kills with a rocket launcher it's going to help you in multiple ways over here acquire cabal gold by playing playlists strikes crucible public events and more dungeons i think count too and nightmare hunts and random stuff uh you need 100 gold for this one and then down here i have to smash five tribute chests and then i have to focus five umbral engrams and the focuses do require that you use charges from the hammer of proving so there's the focus on the top left of the prismatic recaster that i'll show you guys where it only takes legendary shards those don't count so don't waste those umbral engrams there early what you want to do is make sure every time you focus an engram it at least requires one hammer charge so right here you do five focused engrams with the hammer charge and smash five tribute chests each time you do some of these challenges that have the war table reputation, as you can see, you can claim it. Now, we're only on week one. We're going to get all the way down through week 10, and then you're going to have your seasonal stuff, but that's just bright dust. So each week, we're going to have more of these challenges to do that are going to give us war table reputation. Now, how much does war table reputation medium give you? Well, go ahead and click on it. Going to go ahead and get the reputation. Going to pop back out here. And now you'll notice I went up a rank. So reputation medium from one of those challenges is going to give you one whole rank, which is good. Now I can pick up my chosen engram. I'm going to leave that there for now because it's not one that I can go focus. I literally just have to go decode it. But I can go into hammer enhancements and now show you a little more. So you can see from here, I can now either go after Cabal Gold or I can come over here and get the Red Legion chest. I'm, I'm not going to do this one now. Because to go through this one, to this one, even just to consider this as an option, I'm wasting one here for the time being because I just don't really care about the random gear. So for the moment, as I said, I'm going to work my way straight down here and straight down here. I didn't cover specifically the middle. All this is, is gives you a chance to earn random season of the chosen gear when you smash a tribute chest. Just gives you a chance to earn more. And then also when you smash the chest, you get two instead of one. So that's fine. But at this point... I can either get the hammer charge up to seven or I can hold more gold. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hold more gold. Cool. So that's all I'm going to get for the week. Because now, as you can tell, if I go back into my challenges this week, I have nothing else. And these were bright dust as well. That's going to give me any more of that war table reputation. Then nothing else is going to be there. So I've got to wait until next week until I unlock any other new perks to the hammer. So, this is where I'm leaving mine this week. Depending on how many challenges we get next week that are hammer related, I'm going to work down through charges and gold. And then, as I said, work left through this column and then this column. So I know that was one last random little tangent, but I wanted to let you guys know about War Table Reputation. Only comes from challenges, so make sure you're paying attention to the season seasonal challenges on your quest tab. Because without that, you're really not going to make much progress on your hammer and you're probably going to be wondering why. So open up the seasonal challenges, do what they need. They ask you to do, get gold, you know, smash the chest, focus your engrams, kill stuff with the rockets. That's this week. Now, from here, all of this stuff together with the hammer, the charges, you know, the reputation and all this stuff. Once you have the hammer charges, what do you do with them? Well, we're going to go over to the prismatic recaster and umbral engrams and talk all about that. If you turn around in the helm and go to the other side, the prismatic recaster is where all of this is going to come into play and why I'm talking about the capacity of the charges and all of that stuff. So the prismatic recaster, what it does is it takes any umbral engram that you get. So if I go into my inventory, I've got one right now, umbral engram. Now what I can do theoretically is leave the prismatic recaster, come over here to the umbral decoder, because these are like kind of darkness engrams, so the crypt arcs can't open them. Uh, but the Umbral Decoder, I could click on this and I can get just a random smorgasbord of loot. Pretty much anything that's kind of in the world loot pool, whether it be seasonal stuff, other world things, there's basically anything in here. Armor, weapons, doesn't matter. It's not very focused, it's not very directed, it's just a random drop. Kind of the similar to a legendary engram that you'll get right now. There's no focus to it, it's just going to be a drop. Now the whole purpose of the Prismatic Recaster is going to be taking that Umbral Engram and giving it direction. Now, first you'll see Active Season. Since they brought the Prismatic Recaster, it's going to be back for a while. Currently, we're in the Active Season. This is Season of the Chosen. Probably next season, we're going to see, 
you know, season of the chosen probably drop down to, you know, legacy season if you're still trying to go for that stuff. And then the active season would be then season 14's name, whatever that's going to be. <coughs> but the way this works is season of the chosen is your vendor subscreen. Hammer's here. Hammer's probably going to be around for a while unless we get a different, like, you know, quest item for each season. Just have to see how it goes. But first tier focusing is not that expensive, generally. And these first three especially are pretty cheap. You have an Umbrella Ingram, you have five legendary shards. You can either get weapons from pretty much any of the world activities. You can do armor from any of the world activities. That could be moon, public events, strikes, who knows. Except strike specific stuff, that is going to drop in there. Or you can do chosen, and that's season of, cho season of the chosen, weapons, or armor. All that's going to take you is five legendary shards. I have way too many, so if you're new, you may not have that many. But legendary shards, they're not hard to come by, so don't worry about these. Now, when it comes over to these two, you start to focus it a little bit. So you can say, I want a Season of the Chosen weapon. It's going to take an Umbral Engram, five shards, and one hammer charge, which I currently do have. So if I want to be like, I want a Season of the Chosen weapon. It doesn't give me any specifics. There's quite a few of them. But if I want a weapon from this season, bam, right here, you're good. Same thing, Season of the Chosen armor. Same principle, one. Now, my advice right now, as you're trying to use your focused engrams for quests and things of that nature, the seasonal challenges as well that you'll have to do, I would only focus on weapons because the armor from here is not likely to be a high stat roll. So my advice is probably not this one. If you're really just dying for some upgraded armor, maybe this will drop at a higher level, but it probably won't. So my advice here, honestly, just go for weapons, see if you get some decent rolls. You can get some better armor down here. Tier 2 focusing is going to give you some more specific nature, but not all of it. So... Tier 2 is going to break down weapons into groups of two. So you've either got the submachine gun or the sidearm. You've either got the bow or the sniper. And then you've got the rocket launcher and the linear fusion rifle. Now, each of the Tier 2 focus engrams, you'll notice, cost three hammer charges. This is why I told you guys I want to upgrade the capacity of my hammer to hold 10, ten charges kind of as soon as I can. Because it's not going to take you that long to burn through charges, especially when you get down to Tier 3. So the other side over here is all armor, and it's literally you can pick which piece of armor you want to drop. Helmet, gauntlets, chest armor, legs, class item. Now, the stats on this are going to be completely random. Good, bad, trash, who knows. But if you are missing a certain piece of gear, you can see this is going to drop at 1265. Boots, 1265. Is there a piece of gear that's lacking behind? Maybe I have Greaves that are my highest is 1262 right now. Well, if I go and I'm trying to level up and all I need is just a pair of boots and it really doesn't matter that much, but that's going to help me level up. Come in here, grab a pair of boots, bam, 1265. I just jumped three levels and I got to choose it. So these say they're acquired from tribute chests. Uh, I think just as you go through and do battlegrounds and smash the tribute chests, you're just going to unlock the capability to do these. So I think that's just going to be run some battlegrounds, smash some chests, and you should open these eventually. It doesn't give any more specifics on how to open them than that from what I can tell. So if anybody in the comments knows a little bit more of how these chosen chest armors work, let me know. But my understanding is there's no specific requirements on these five armor pieces besides the fact that it will drop from basically just a tribute chest. is kind of like, oh, you broke a tribute chest, now you can do chests. A couple later, maybe you'll get boots and so forth. So tier two focusing is three hammer charges. Tier three is when you get into very specific focuses and also it's going to cost you. So down here for chosen resilience, for example, I'm going to get a piece of season of the chosen armor with a high resilience roll. Now high roll is kind of subjective, but I will say high roll likely probably has at least this, the resilience in 15, 16 category. So pretty decent spike to that stat roll. Now everything else could be complete trash. You could have like 30 in mobility, 12 in strength, and 2 in intellect or something. Who knows? So you only get to focus one stat. That's kind of fine, I guess. But you also don't get to choose which piece of gear this is on. So you'll notice up here you're going for helmet. Here you're going for stat. There's not like a tier 4 where you get to go for a helmet with high stats. They haven't got that specific. Bungie, if you do ever watch this, I would love to see that as well. If you want it to cost me 10 charges to go for a helmet that has a high resilience stat and I can get that specific, I would actually be really happy about that because then the grind would really be that much more narrowed down 
And yeah, it's going to cost you, but, you know, give you some time to put some time into Battlegrounds. Just a thought, throwing it out there for future seasons. Anyways, armor is going to work all the same way, but in Tier 3, you have certain requirements that you have to do to unlock them. I unlocked this one already. I'm not entirely sure what the requirement was previously, but most of them are pretty clear and it'll show you what it is. So if I want a mobility roll, I need to gather, I need to collect Cabal Gold. I'm halfway through this one. I'm at 126 of 250. So as you accumulate gold, you'll check this box and this one will be available. If you want a recovery stat roll, you're going to need to use the hammer, charges itself. You're going to need to use 30 charges. Now, I've unlocked this one. If I use, if I store up five charges and I get my one piece of armor, that's going to count for five and it's going to take me from five up to ten. So it's just the number of charges you use, whether it's one, three, five, you just have to use a set number of charges and it's 30. It's going to take you a little while, but you'll get there. For uh, discipline, you're going to need grenade kills and you're going to need 350 of them. Once you have 350 grenade kills during the season, you're going to have the chance to go for discipline stat heavy armor. Intellect. Logically, you need super kills. And for strength, you're going to need um, melee kills as well. I'm pretty sure it's melee kills, and I've already completed this one. Now, I don't know why it's specifically not showing as, like, completed but not available. So, again, maybe it's just one of those things that needs to unlock at time. Maybe it's one of those things I need to just, like, actually upgrade or fully charge my hammer to be able to have the option. Either way, it should unlock. This one, I didn't have to do anything specific. And I have never done a chosen, you know, resilience engram. It's just available now, so I'm not sure what's stopping this one. Just have to find out. When it comes to the weapons, what you're going to be able to do is actually choose two weapons to narrow it down to. So you're in the same perk pools of two. But now you're going to be able to look at the final column of perks, which is usually some of the cooler perks. And you're going to have two, ch two to pick from on each weapon you get. So, log so what you would do is you'd get a rocket launcher like this. But instead of just having Ambitious Assassin over here, I would also have a second thing underneath it. So if you're going for a god roll, you at least have your you get more chances at that god roll because each weapon you get has two different perks on it. So maybe this one's great and this one's only okay, but that second perk's perfect. And there you go. Move it down, select the perk down here, and you're good to go. So the Prismatic Recaster is going to be all about focused loot. Do you love bows and you want that god tier god that bow? Well, you're going to be doing quite a few of these far-flung fatality engrams, and you're going to be trying to get that bow that has that perfect roll. Sniper's the same way. That new SMG, you know, getting you excited? Well, here's where you're going to be doing it a lot. So, again, you can go armor to fill slots here, like as you're leveling up. That's mostly what this is for. And then down here is very specific stat focuses, but not the slot. So... As you go through, you'll notice for just the two narrow downs, you're like, I've got 400 rocket launcher kills. If I want to get tier three, I need 1,200 rocket launcher kills. Probably going to want to get on using a rocket launcher fairly soon. Snipers and bows. The new um, exotic from the season pass, I've been using that bow a lot. 750 bow kills, I'll unlock this one. I need 2,100 bow or sniper kills to unlock this one. It's going to take a little while. Same thing here, SMG kills. Go find one of those SMGs or sidearms from the season and start using it. doesn't matter which one. You can use any sidearm or submachine gun, but they are going to give them to you this season, so you may as well use them. 750 here, and then 2100 also here. So it's going to take you a while to unlock Tier 3 for the weapons. So keep in mind as you're playing through, try and use rocket launchers or linear fusions. Try and use bows or snipers. Try and use sub sidearms or submachine guns. So you can unlock these as you're just running around doing battlegrounds or basic stuff. Unless you're not doing a very difficult specific activity, try and use these so you make progress towards them. So that pretty much wraps all of this up for you guys. I know it's kind of a strange process, but a general summary again is what you're going to do is go into normal activities. Crucible, Strikes, Gambit, Dungeons, Public Events. You're going to earn Cabal Gold. That gold is what you're going to use to buy the medallions on your hammer. Once you slot at least one medallion into that hammer, you're going to go into the Battlegrounds playlist, finish the Battleground, and then the Tribute Chests at the end, you're going to smash those with the hammer. Once you smash those with the hammer, you're going to get whatever loot comes out, but you're also going to get a charge into your hammer. You're going to use those charges that you accumulate to pair with Umbral Engrams to bring them back here to the Prismatic Recaster, and from there, you're going to decide where you want to take your loot. Do I want a weapon? Do I want a specific weapon? Do I want a good stat roll on a weapon? And you can go from there. So that pretty much wraps up this whole thing that's going on here in the helm. 
both the war table and then don't forget the seasonal challenges are how you get that reputation to upgrade the hammer. Uh, but that's pretty much everything we got here. The helm, the war table, the prismatic recaster, and the umbral decoder. All of this going on basically is a chance for you to go as directed as you can with still some RNG towards the gear that you want. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know there's a lot of complexity to this one, but I tried to clear it up as best as I could. If you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. If you guys are really enjoying the leveling up video, if you haven't seen that one, you guys can check that one out here. I'll tag it as well. And of course, as you guys are new to the channel, some of you guys may not know that I stream on Twitch and YouTube. So if you follow me on YouTube, if you like, subscribe, hit the alert bells and all that stuff, you'll know when I go live on YouTube and then also on twitch.tv slash Ebontis. Other than that, you can find me on Twitter covering things of game news, random tweets, stream schedule, all that stuff you'll find there. Thank you all very much. Have an awesome one and I will see you soon.